Hey everybody, this is Nicole with Topaz. Thanks so much for joining me here today. I am so happy to welcome back Greg Rastami. Hi, Greg. Hi. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Greg um, is joining us to talk about how he has um, eliminated web and kind of that stained glass look that you might find using Simplify sometimes. But if you use certain tools within Photoshop and Photoshop Elements, he's going to be going over that today. You can eliminate that and still get beautiful painterly type effects. He's also going to be sharing some other artistic tips that I'm really excited that he's going to show you all in Topaz Simplify today. Hi everybody and let me show my screen so uh, you can see some of these images. I really enjoy using Topaz Simplify a lot, uh, not only because of the artistic effects that it can do, but also uh, the line effects that it does with the edge detection. Now, now, one of the things that Nicole said was that these artifacts that usually happen where you get this webbing or the stained glass between the, the branches of trees is a bug, when in reality it's kind of like a... Um, it's uh, what happens when you use these kinds of algorithms and uh, these algorithms are essentially called scale space algorithms and so what they're trying to do is to actually close off holes or eliminate details and uh, when it sees things that are close together it's actually doing its job it's trying to really find what's going on but as a result of it trying to do its job it produces these you know artifacts so it's just something that kind of comes to the territory and uh, just about any of the images that I've processed using Topaz Simplify, uh, in some way or the other, that webbing effect is there. And you can see with my mouse, I'm highlighting some of those areas. And obviously, there are other parts of the image where it looks absolutely stunning. You know, there is no problems at all. You know, so this image over here, there are no problems at all. Um, on this image, everything looks fine, but we can see a little bit of that webbing effect happening here in the trees. Just a little bit of it here on the trees in the background as well. So essentially, uh, all of these images in some way or the other suffer slightly from this artifact. Now, this is the image that we're going to be actually talking about today. So this is what normally would happen if you take this photograph through Topaz Simplify. And I'm going to show you in a very simple set of steps how you're going to transform that image into this image right here. And it happens pretty automatically. In fact, it happens so automatically that you're welcome to actually record these steps into an action. So you can just simply activate that action on every one of your photos that you use for Topaz Simplify. So let's get started. Um, for this, you're going to have to use either Photoshop or Photoshop Elements. So this is not going to work in Lightroom or Aperture or iPhoto or any of the other editing programs that Topaz supports that do not have layers or some of the different ways of changing uh, the layer styles. So this is the image, and I want you to notice that uh, it's just being loaded in as a default. You know, it's a, it's a beautiful tree. I really love this photo a lot. And the first thing that I usually do is I make several copies of it, and I'm doing that with Command J. I can also do it with Control J on the PC. So you can see that I made about four copies of that image. Starting from the top, uh, under Filter, you're going to pull down a Topaz Labs, Topaz Simplify 3. All right. Now, um, what I had done previously actually is already here in the memory. So let me get rid of my left side panel because I'm going to predominantly be using just the sliders here for this presentation. And you can see that this is the image that we start out with. And simplify size is the first slider on the list, and that's the slider that we're going to crank up. Now, usually when I do this, I like to do this in the RGB color space, and that's in contrast to uh, the YCBCR color space. Uh, and that's just because this particular effect that I'm about to show you and how we're going to get rid of these webbing effects works best in RGB. So now, just as I crank up Simplify Size, already the image is looking really, really nice. It's already beginning to look like a painting, as if an artist has applied brush strokes. But of course, this is where we're seeing the webbing or the stained glass effect happening here. Now, uh, I am going to uh, make a couple of other adjustments here. Uh, we're going to use a feature called Feature Boost. And that's really wonderful because it allows you to um, just take some of the features that are there and boost them in color. So it adds in this really wonderful, rich set of colors that are going to be in your image. Uh, and then finally, down at the bottom, I always like to use a little bit of saturation or a saturation boost as well. So that's going to, again, really pump up the colors. And I am now intentionally making sure that I get this webbing artifact. Because essentially, if I take Simplify Size, 
and I bring it further down so I don't apply it as much, you'll see that that webbing effect is going to go away. But unfortunately, the image no longer looks like a painting. It looks like just a simple photograph you know, that's been slightly modified. So let's go back to the problem. So here it is. We got the web. And if you like these settings, uh, one of the things that I also recommend for you to do is for you to actually save this setting out. So under Save over here, uh, we're going to call this, let's say, Paint 1. You know, I'll hit OK. All right. So I'm going to also hit OK so you'll be able to see that Topaz is going to go ahead and process that image. Now uh, that we see the problem, I'm going to also do this one more time with the layer that's right underneath that top layer that we have. And again, you're going to pull down to Topaz Labs, Topaz Simplify. But this time, the only thing that I'm going to change in the settings that we have is I'm going to move that Simplify Size Slider. Let me zoom in a little closer so we can see what's going on here with the tree. Okay? I'm going to move that down until I do not see any webbing artifacts. In fact, the one that I'm looking at right now actually looks pretty good. You know, I barely see any webbing going on anywhere in the tree. And this is completely up to you. It's a kind of arbitrary. It's like sometimes you're going to accept a certain amount of webbing and other times you won't. Or you'll just be, you know, uh, you would want to get it every little nook and cranny out of it. Okay. So if you're satisfied with this image, now you're going to hit OK as well. So now you'll notice that there are two images. There's one image that has the webbing problem and another image that does not have the webbing problem. Now I'm going to take the image actually with the webbing problem and I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that again. So because later on we want to be able to get back to it. Okay. So let's take the image that has the webbing problem and we're going to change the mode of its combining. Actually I'll zoom out here just a little bit. Uh, the combination mode, you want to change it to difference. That is the very most important thing you have to remember, difference. Once you change it to difference, now what Photoshop is doing is that it's highlighting the differences between the image that did have the web problem and the image that did not. So once we have this image, I usually multi-select uh, both of those layers together, which is the, the difference of, of them, and I combine them with a Command E or a Control E. Actually, I've never done a pull down for commanding or combining layers together, which is actually there it is, merge layers, I should say, which is Command E. So you hit merge layers, and there we go. We've now created a layer which represents that difference. Um, at this point, you want to immediately change this to black and white. So under adjustment, pull down to desaturate. So it's going to make that image look like it's black and white. And then bring up the levels control. So once again, under image, adjustment, pull down the levels. It's command L or control L. So here is our levels control. What we want to do now with levels is we want to make sure that we make all this webbing problem become as bright and as white as possible. You know, so just constantly crank this up. And at the same time, some of the other areas that we want to make painterly, if you see they're getting bright too, take the black side of those levels and pull them back down. So we want those to disappear, but we want all of this webbing problem happening on the tree to become very, very white. And that's why you're just going to do everything you can to crank that up on that white slider as much as you can. And then on the opposite side of the spectrum, you're going to crank down the, the black side of it so all these little effects around the sides disappear. So at this point, you hit OK. And now this is the difference image. Basically, it's like a difference mat that's between the image that did have the problem and the image that uh, does not have the problem. Uh, usually at this point, there's one other thing that I do is I'll just grab my brush and I'll make sure that my color is black. And I'll just go ahead and basically brush out some of the other things that are in the image that I know I just want to keep. Now, you don't necessarily have to do this step. Uh, if you're creating a macro to do this, uh, you don't have to do that because obviously brushing a certain area out cannot be a part of a, a macro or an action. But uh, in, for this particular example, I wanted to go ahead and do that for you. Okay. So here we finally have it. We have basically a mask that represents uh, the webbing problem. All right. So now this is going to become just very normal, everyday Photoshop kind of stuff. Essentially, here's what we got. We have an image that um, has our webbing problem. I'm going to move that right underneath over here so you can see that. And we have another image that does not. So all we have to do now is erase from one image to the other image in the background using the mask that we just created. 
So you uh, select that layer that has the mask. Command A or Control A selects everything. You're going to do a copy. So edit, copy. Um, select the layer that does have the problem in it. And make sure you go into the uh, edit in quick mask mode, which is the Q button on the keyboard. And so now this allows you to basically paste in the image that we had just cut out into the layer mask. So you paste it in, and then you hit that uh, edit in standard mode. Now it's just going to be hit the Q button, so it gets you out of the quick mask. And now you can see the marching ants that are going around all the webbing problem. At this point, usually I like to hide my mask just so that I can see my images a little bit better. So I do that with the commands H. I have no idea where the pull down is, but it really doesn't matter. So are you ready? Here's where the magic is going to happen. All you do is you select that layer that you're on, which is actually the layer that you're on right now, and you just hit the delete or the backspace key, and it's, on, it's done. It's finished. So what just happened right now is that it erased using the mask. In fact, if I was to turn off some of these other layers over here, you'd see exactly what happened, is that it took every little area here. If I zoom in, you can see that a little bit better. Every area that had the masking problem, and as I zoom in, you can also see how it's the favorite checkerboard pattern. Um, so it's basically cutting out that webbing problem, and it's revealing the image which was underneath it. And ta-da, we're done with the image. Now, at this point, uh, I also wanted to share with you just a few couple of uh, other tip, tips and tricks to make more painterly results happen from uh, Topaz Simplify. Um, in general, as we look around Topaz Simplify, as we zoom in, uh, you, you can see that the effect is really beautiful. I mean, it really does look like an artist has taken a brush stroke uh, and has painted on a canvas to create uh, the hillside or the beautiful grass in the foreground. And as we look at the tree itself, it also seems as if an artist has done a very rough job of working on the actual tree trunk or the leaves that are on the tree. And obviously this is in contrast to uh, what would happen if you looked at the original image. So in the original image, everything just looks like a photograph. You know? Now I'm going to take these two different layers that were here, and once again I'm going to merge them together. Merge layers. So here we go now with some effects that are going to make it look like a painter really applied very thick brush strokes to the image. Select that layer, uh, which is our final image. Under filter, now before I do this, let me actually make a copy of this again, just so that we can have a little before and after. Um, normally, I would not make a copy, uh, but in this case, just because I'm demonstrating, I'm going to make a copy. I'm also going to deselect everything, you know, just completely deselect my selection, because that kind of stopped me from making a copy of the layer that I was on. So let's go ahead and make a copy. There we go. And on that layer now, Pull down to Topaz Labs's Topaz Detail. Now, this is a tip that I went over on uh, one of our last webinars, but I'm going to go ahead, go ahead and do this again for you. Reset all. I'll zoom in. So normally what happens when a painter paints is that they're going to take some of the edges of the paint are going to be thick, so they're going to really stick up away from the canvas. So in Topaz Detail, you can just crank up small details, and this is really wonderful. Immediately, it takes a rather flat looking image and it's going to give it just that pop. This is taking all these edges right now in our painting and it's just really, really, really exaggerating these differences. You can see it here in the clouds very well. So uh, before, you see that the clouds are kind of boring and uh, they're subdued, whereas now it almost seems like as if uh, every brush stroke that the painter has applied is really very well defined. So that's the first step and that's very, very easy and immediately just crank up one slider and it gives you that effect. Now the next thing that I want to share with you is how we truly can make every brush stroke seem like it's thick and it's sticking up actually away from the canvas. So we got that layer selected. You're going to once again duplicate that layer. Take this now and this is what we're going to in a very sneaky way use a traditional filter in Photoshop which is called emboss. All right. So as you can see, immediately the emboss effect happens. Now by default, emboss is not going to have these variables. Most likely it will have variables that will be like a little thicker like that, which is like really ugly. You don't want that unless you want to create this kind of an exaggerated effect. But what I usually do is I take the height to a level of 1, and I take the angle of the emboss, and I like to light things kind of like from the upper left-hand corner. So you can see right here that that arrow 
is in the upper left hand corner. And at this point, I just hit OK. All right. So what's happened now is that I want you to look at this image actually as like a um, a bump map. Uh, in, in computer graphics in 3D, they call these bump maps, which means it's kind of like the bumpiness of your paint. And it actually looks like that. If you were to zoom in on it, it seems like you know, the highlights are over here and the dark areas are dark, and hence that's why this is called emboss. Um, the first thing that I do usually with this emboss image is, once again, I'll just make it black and white because I really don't care about the color that it has. And the next thing that I do is I'm going to duplicate it. And I'll just invert the duplicate. So you can see that right here, just a simple invert. It's a command I. Okay, and I'll show you why we did that in a moment. If you look at the original image, you'll notice that the clouds look like they are not sticking up away from the canvas, but they're actually indented, or like as if they're carved in, which is wrong because on a canvas, you would never have anything that would be you know, sunk into the canvas. Everything's going to be built up on top of the canvas. So at this point, all you want to do is grab your eraser brush, okay, and just erase through from the version of the image that has the inverted version of it. So essentially what we're doing is taking the clouds that were sunk in and we're making them stick up away from it. And really, again, very straightforward. Uh, just every time you see this, you just kind of apply a brush stroke. I'm going to zoom in on it a little bit so I can see some of the areas around here. These we needed, so I'll just go ahead and apply those two. All right. It looks actually pretty good. You know, I'm going to uh, stay with it the way that it is. Oh, you need a little bit over here, too. So let's uh, do a little exaggeration of those brush strokes over there as well. Okay. All righty. So now we have this emboss image that we're very happy with. So again, as before, select these two different layers and merge those layers, and merge uh, down, there we go, oops, that's not what I wanted to do, <laughs> let me just do it with a command E, that's what I'm used to using, so do it that way right there, okay, perfect. Uh, the last thing that I usually do is I'll take this particular image and I'll just apply some contrast to it, you know, so under adjustment, brightness and contrast, and uh, what's really nice about contrast is going to take all of these areas that were not so white, basically this is the way that the image was, and now we're going to really, really crank that up. We're going to make the gray stay gray, but these white areas, uh, we're going to just really, really punch that through. In fact, you're welcome to apply brightness on contra contrast several times, so you can just really, really, really highlight that. In fact, that's what I do. I'll apply it several times right here. Okay, so now at this point, we have an image that represents how paint would be sticking up away from our canvas. And obviously, we also have our image in the background, which we had just processed before. So the only last thing that's left to be done is change that layer blending style from normal to overlay. And now we're done. And let me highlight exactly what just happened right now. Uh, if I zoom in on here, okay, let's take a look at, like, for example, some of these areas right around here. Okay, you can see that now every little brush stroke seems like it actually has a highlight on it. And this is in contrast to what would happen if there was, you know, if we did not have that overlay there. So once again, this is what it looks like with it. This is what it looks like without it. And as I move around here, especially some of these areas right here, it looks like the paint strokes are very just two-dimensional. And when you turn this on, it literally looks like the paint strokes are very, very three-dimensional and they're literally sticking up away from the canvas. Okay, same here for the clouds. Uh, this is what it used to look like. That's what it looks like now. And on the tree itself, same thing. I was like, zoom in on the tree. Okay, if you look at the brush strokes maybe that were applied here for this particular leaf, uh, this is what it used to look like. This is what it looks like now. Uh, the little box that's over here, uh, you can see the highlights that are around these little bumps. Uh, again, that's what it used to look like. That's what it looks like now. And usually at this point, I would just, you know, finish the painting, but uh, I will throw in just one last effect. And usually when a painter uh, paints on canvas, the canvas itself has a little bit of texture to it. So uh, again, I will merge these two layers together. And uh, under the filters panel, pull down to texture and go to texturizer. And probably my favorite texturizer is just uh, sandstone, just because the uh, canvas 
kind of produces a, a repetitive pattern that I don't like that much. So uh, I like sandstone better. And the scaling, usually if you really exaggerate the scale, you'll notice that it's just it's a little too much. Now some people might like that, but uh, for me it's just a little too exaggerated. And again, you notice how the light is coming from a top left. And this is now going to be in unison with what we had done with that emboss layer that we applied before. So just a level of one or two should be fine. You hit OK. And ta -da, we're done. So those are all the steps that I go through. Let me actually make this full screen here for you so you can uh, appreciate that it has, has the texture on the canvas. And uh, the paint strokes actually are three dimensional. That's it. All right, thanks, Greg. Really appreciate all those tips. There were a few people who watched your past webinar on Clean and Simplify who are asking oh, okay. about the uh, tip that you showed with the seascape in the bird. And yes. I believe it was the same step that you just went over with the detail, correct? Yes, yes, it was. You're talking okay. about this photograph right here. Right. Um, is there any way yes. you could show that again? There are a few sure. people. Okay, awesome. Okay. <laughs> no problem. So, so, so there's, there's the original image you're starting from. Uh, in fact, I can do this right inside of iPhoto. It doesn't matter really what you use. It can be in Photoshop or iPhoto. It, it will all work the same way. So um, first, uh, we're going to use a little bit of Topaz Adjust. I'll uh, use the new Topaz Adjust 5. Because <laughs> last time I did this, actually, Adjust 5 didn't exist. So um, it usually uh, does just use uh, Vibrance. It's one of my favorite presets. Okay, there we go. And let's zoom in on it so we can see what's happening. And um, at this point, I want to be able to take some of the details that were in the clouds and accentuate that even more. So I'll open up the Details tab, and I'll just strengthen my crowds, clouds even more. And if you look along the horizon, you're going to notice that in the original, the haze is, uh, is obstructing our view of the clouds, whereas now the clouds definitely have more contrast and more detail to them. And um, usually at this point, the other thing that I'll do is I want to see more colors from the clip side. So I'll open up the Colors tab, and uh, we'll use a little Saturation Boost. So that's going to just definitely give us more color. And the new feature in Topaz Adjust 5, which allows you to actually slide the slider while you're working with it, is really wonderful. In fact, that feature is called Interactive Sliders. If you haven't found this under the Preferences in Adjust 5, definitely turn it on. Uh, for some of you who have faster computers, it's really, really wonderful. So that's what I'm using. It just I can interactively see my colors building up. So once you have this and you like it, and you, know, you took an image that's very gray and added added color to it, you're going to hit OK. In fact, you know what? I'm going to give you a little more saturation boost just because I want more color out of it. There we go. Hit OK. OK. So there's the image there after it processes. And now we want to use the um, Topaz Simplify. Now, surprisingly, in this image, because we don't have too many um, branches of trees or anything, we're not going to get much of the webbing problem. But I'm going to click on Buzz Sim, and if I see, you know, I'd actually, you know what, I don't really see much of the webbing problem happening anywhere in this image. And uh, I'll zoom in on it just so you can see that this is what the image used to look like, and this is what it looks like now. It's just beautiful. It's just like a painting. Uh, you hit OK. And the last thing you want to do is. Uh, select Topaz uh, Detail. I I'm doing that, by the way, by hitting either the Edit button in um, iPhoto. For those of you who might be using this with iPhoto, um, you can also hit the Enter key on the keyboard. And uh, the same step that I did in this last image that I showed you with the tree is you're just going to take small detail and crank it up. And that's, that's the only thing you have to do. And so as far as the before and after goes, this is what it used to look like, where you can see that Everything is rather flat, you know, whereas when you look at the after version, it seems as if every brush stroke is very, very, very well defined. And it's just a nice, sharp brush strokes. And it doesn't look like it's sharp artificially, like the way that um, maybe Photoshop's sharpening or unsharp masking would do. It's just this very, very natural, wonderful sharpening effect that you're getting from it. And this is the last step. You hit the OK button. Um, and at this point, actually, you're welcome to use the other technique that I showed you for embossing the paint as well. And, and that would work, too. But this is the last time I did this. This is basically where I stopped. Yes. Awesome. There's Thank the you. Folder. There's the after. Yeah. Great. <laughs> A couple questions here about the webbing issue. 
Barbara was talking about using the different color spaces, whether YCBCR um, helps to remove some of the webbing in, versus the RCB that you were using. The RG, RGB, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah. yeah, that's okay. Um, the, essentially, what, you, what, what I hope everybody you know, is going to take away from this webinar is what you want to do is to create a difference between two images. And that difference is where this webbing is. Um, when you process the image using YCBR uh, you know, mode, that difference isn't as exaggerated. You know, whereas in contrast, when you use RGB, the difference is actually considerably more between those two images. Now, if you choose to use YCBR, it's still going to work, you know, but it's just not going to get as much of that webbing showing up. And you're going to have to do a little bit more manual work to get it out. So that's, yeah, that's totally up to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Marcella asks if you suggest using low ISO when selecting images to process this workflow, if that's going to make a difference. If it's high ISO, uh, it, maybe have a lot of noise versus... Uh, no, no, it, uh, it really doesn't matter. I mean, in, in general, you know, doing these kind of painterly effects is just so freeform that you can do anything you want. <laughs> it, it doesn't matter. You can be a, a high ISO or a low ISO and, and everything is going to be fine because um, the noise actually ends up kind of like adding texture to it. Now, if, if you don't like that texture, then of course you can use Topaz Denoise to get rid of that uh, texture that's going to be in your final painting. But what the noise does uh, inherently, it's going to take all the edges of the brush strokes and it's going to make them look much more scraggly and random and just noisy, you know. Uh, whereas if you have a photo that has no noise at all, then the brush strokes actually seem a little bit more organic. So that's probably the best thing that I can say about making sure there isn't too much noise in your photo. Okay, great. Let's see here. I had a couple people writing in that they came in late and wanted to know exactly what the webbing problem is. Like, how, how does it get into okay. the areas? Okay, so here, here's what's going on. Um, the uh, image processing technology that does simplify um, or is some, they're fundamentally called scale space operators. Um, uh, there's other words for it in image processing. They're called morphological operators. It's a bunch of technical language. <laughs> but essentially, <laughs> what, it's, what it's trying to do is it's trying to get rid of details that are based on a certain size. And that's why you, know, you can use Topaz Simplify with only one slider, Simplify Size, and you'll see how the computer is continuously trying to get rid of details. You know? So as I keep cranking this up more and more and more, you'll see how this, all these little details are beginning to disappear. Um, and as an artifact of getting rid of details, the computer regards the spaces that are in between branches as details. Hence, it's trying to close off those areas because it's doing exactly what you've told it to do, which is it means it's trying to get rid of those things that are of a certain size. So it's not necessarily an error in what it's doing, but it's just uh, the nature of the beast, essentially. Yes. <laughs> Let's see here. Alice asks, you don't, or I know that you don't recommend it for portraits. However, if people are in the image, um, do you suggest using it at all? Uh, by all means. Yeah. In fact, I have uh, a nice image over here that I'll just go ahead and pass on to you. Uh, the image is, um, this is a wonderful image that I found. Uh, I don't know if it was in a Topaz form or not. Uh, this was actually modified using um, Topaz Simplify. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on it here just because there are people in this shot. Um, I really love this image and whoever did this I would love to find them and thank them. It's, it's just really nice. And so you'll notice that in this image there are people that are in the boat, right? And what has happened is that Topaz Simplify has gotten rid of all of the details that are on their faces and in their clothing and essentially they've become these big blobs, <laughs> which is uh, very stylized and using Topaz simplifies uh, edge detection technology. Now there are lines around the people, so they look like they've actually been drawn in. Or there's black lines around it. So um, yeah, if there's people in the shot, it's actually kind of cool because it's going to simplify the details that are in the people as well. Um, a general rule of thumb in Topaz Simplify is that if you see certain areas that are giving you a problem, with, and, and you see other areas that you really like what it looks like, 
Um, what I usually do with Topaz Simplify is I work with it using multiple layers. So I'll make one layer where it's really the big details have disappeared, you know. And I'll make another layer where smaller details have only disappeared and the big details are maybe there still, you know. And then I'll just rub through or erase from one layer to the other. Uh, in fact, a good example of that, which I did not do, uh, is this image. Uh, let's see if I can find it here for you. Here we go. It's this image right here. Okay, now, you're going to notice here that the people have details. They're here walking on that path. Uh, the tree that's in the foreground has details, whereas in contrast, the clouds and the trees and the path and everything else in this image does not have details. And it looks like it's, uh, the artist has applied much larger, wider brush strokes. Of course, the boat as well has details too. And, and essentially, the person, the artist that did this image in Topaz Simplify just created two different layers. One layer where all this detail had gone away, and it was basically the, where the clouds and the trees look like, and another layer where the Simplify size slider was very, very small, and hence it created these details that the people walking on the path or the boat or this tree that's hanging here in the foreground. Uh, and by simply rubbing through from one layer to the other, you create that final image. Nice. Okay, I have a couple technical questions. When you're working with this type of imagery that you've shown us today, what is your suggestion about output? Um, on what type of paper do you think that this type of look um, will really um, look the best? Well, you're trying to create a painting, so if you can print it on canvas, that's the best. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean you, you'll be amazed as you take some of your photographs that are of landscapes or trees or scenery or just about anything um, and you apply to a past simplify and you apply some of the techniques that I t taught you today it, it's really really gonna blow your socks off um, so that you know really relish that final image you get and if you want to show it off uh, take it to a printers and have them put it out on canvas <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, so Greg thank you so much for sharing all these tips with us. Oh, I Sometimes I'm you. amazed at the different really stuff. Lot of fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you teach me things every time, so that's great. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. All right, everybody, have a good day, and um, hope to see you soon in an upcoming webinar. Bye-bye. Have a good day, everybody.